If you don't want to pay $250 for the new Magic Keyboard Folio case for the iPad 10th generation, today we're going to look at some of the best and pretty affordable keyboard cases available. I'll leave a link for everything covered in this video down in the description below. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> This one is the Combo Touch by Logitech, and it comes in two different colors, graphite, and the one shown here is Oxford Gray. This one is gonna be the most expensive out of all these, but it's really nice quality. Sort of four different modes here, obviously with the keyboard attached, one that's in more of a drawing, typing position, one that's more of a vertical stand position. Then you also have a spot here on the top for the Apple Pencil. If you happen to have the older style Logitech crayon, also fits here on the side. Not sure if it's supposed to, but because this is so flexible, seems to work pretty good. So you could use this as a regular case with the stand. And then you don't have to use the keyboard at all. You can just use the cover by itself as a normal case for the iPad. Pretty strong magnet on this one as well. You've got the cutout for Touch ID there on the top. It's got nice cutouts there for the charging port and speakers. The volume buttons are covered by the TPU material. Pretty flexible, sort of a matte finish to it. I feel like they could stick out a little bit more, but they actually do work really good. Nice fabric material here on the outside. It is going to add some weight to it, but not real thick. You can see the connection right there in the center. Overall, pretty lightweight as far as the keyboard goes. The keys feel like they have just enough travel for me. The keys feel large enough and are pretty comfortable to type on. You've also got several shortcuts here along the top row. You've got your home button, screen brightness, your Siri button, screenshot, media controls like play, pause, forwards, backwards. Then you've got audio controls, volume up and down, and mute button as well. The trackpad on this one works really good as well. Seems pretty responsive. Two fingers to swipe left and right. Swipe down to do a search, swipe back up to close it, swipe with three fingers to switch between apps, and the trackpad has some nice clickiness to it as well. And then if you close the stand on here, you can use this as a regular iPad case. Overall, just really nice quality here from Logitech. Also is gonna give you extra grip for your iPad. And I also feel like some people are gonna like the style of this one. You're still gonna save quite a bit of money going with this one over the official one from Apple. This one is the Rebound Magnetic Keyboard Case by ESR. Actually really nice quality. This one's a little bit cheaper than the Combo Touch by Logitech, but a little bit more expensive than what I would call budget keyboard cases out there. This one comes in one color that I know of, just a dark gray or almost black. It's got a USB-C charging port there on the right hand side. Nice little magnetic flap here that kind of keeps everything together. As you can see, it's got a heavy duty hinge here. Feels like a felt like material here on the inside of the cover. Around the keyboard, sort of that same soft touch material that's on the outside. Got a pretty strong magnet here, kind of hovers above the keyboard itself. Sort of reminds me of the Magic Keyboard. Just hit the power button two times for it to come on. Also has a digital readout for the battery life. All you have to do to pair this one is go into the Bluetooth settings on your iPad and then hold down the right option button plus the letter B. You should see it pop up in the Bluetooth settings. If you just hold down on command, it'll bring up a list of all the shortcuts you can do on here. Now the keys on here actually feel like they're plenty large enough. They've got nice travel. They can't really do a row above this one for shortcuts that you might see on other keyboards, but overall pretty nice quality and definitely a step up from some of those budget options out there. Trackpad on here feels like it's pretty responsive as well. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but pretty clicky on here as well. Also really easy to just take this off of the keyboard and use it by itself, just making it easy to switch back and forth between the two. Then it's exposed where the speakers, power button are, and where the charging port is as well. So you don't have to worry about those being blocked or anything like that. And there's a little edge here on the top, which makes it so you can rest the Apple Pencil there as well. Not really sure if you're supposed to put the Apple Pencil in there when it's closed, but it works that way if you need to. 
I also tested out a couple of the budget options as well, just to see what the quality is like. This one here by MMK comes in two different colors, green or black. This one's a Bluetooth keyboard, has USB-C charging there on the side, and the keyboard itself kind of sticks to the cover using a magnet. Now the part the iPad snaps into, pretty flexible TPU material. You've also got a spot here on the bottom for the Apple Pencil. Pretty easy to get in and out. Then you have three different spots here as far as viewing angle goes. Keyboard itself just kind of snaps right into place. As you can see, it's a pretty strong magnet here for the keyboard. Just hold down on the connect button. Should pop right up here in the Bluetooth settings. It's actually pretty nice. They've got most of your shortcuts that you would need, such as home, search, media controls, audio controls, screen brightness, that kind of stuff. Even though this is gonna be one of the cheapest keyboards out there, yes, typing on this actually feels a little bit cheaper than some others out there, but it's not quite as bad as I thought it would be. If you're not gonna be using a keyboard that often, you just want something to use once in a while, this could be an option for you. Also has a spot here on the top for the Apple Pencil to rest as well. The TPU material does feel a little loose around the iPad, not gonna be as snug as some of the more expensive cases. As you can see, you can also close this up, it has a nice magnetic flap that kind of keeps everything together. Power and volume buttons on here seem to work pretty good as well. Not gonna be the highest quality keyboard case out there, but maybe just for basic use, if you're not gonna use the keyboard that often, this might not be a bad option. I also tried another case by Latos. This one's a 360 degree rotatable keyboard cover. It's got a clear TPU material for the back. This one comes in three different colors, yellow, black, and the one shown here is blue. Keyboard on this one's a little bit different. You've got a metal here on the back, kind of sticks to the case here using magnets and appears to be pretty strong magnets. Now the part that it snaps into actually feels like pretty decent quality. Easy access to the touch ID on the power button. Volume buttons stick out plenty on this one, so pretty easy to use. Pretty nice and clicky as well. Nice oversized cutout for the charging port on the bottom. When in the stand position, you've got a couple different angles to choose from here, but because this material is kind of grippy, you can put it pretty much wherever. You've got the power button on the side, along with the USB-C charging port. Also has little silicone nubs here, so when you close the case, it doesn't scratch up the iPad. If you hold down Function and C, it should show up in the Bluetooth settings. Then you have most of your shortcuts here along the top, like Home, Search, Cut, Audio Controls, Media Controls, Screen Brightness, and a Lock button as well. Now, since the keys are round instead of square, it can take some getting used to. Overall though, pretty decent quality, especially considering the price. I might even like this one better than the MMK case. If you're just wanting a basic keyboard case and you don't want to spend a lot of money, you're not going to get one much cheaper than this one. And surprisingly, it works better than you would think. One downside that I can see, you don't really have a spot for the Apple Pencil to fit. It's just a little too short, but it is super simple to rotate this and use this in portrait mode if you need to. Now this isn't going to be better than something like the ESR case or the Combo Touch by Logitech, but again, surprisingly, this works better than I thought it would. I just kind of wish I had a spot for the Apple Pencil that actually fit. Other than that though, if you just want a cheap keyboard case, you're not going to get much cheaper than this one. Now it is a little awkward when you close it because the keyboard doesn't take up the entire space on the inside, but overall not too bad. Although probably better than the MMK keyboard case. Now let's say you don't need a keyboard case, but you just want a Bluetooth keyboard. There's actually a couple of good options from Logitech. You've got the K480 and the K780. The K480 has a slot here for your tablet to slide into. It's not only gonna work with the iPad 10, but any other tablet as well. Even has a little dial that you can easily switch between devices. It's gonna work on Windows, Mac, 
Android and iOS. You can see you've got a slot here just big enough to fit the iPad 10. You've got a little bit of extra space here though, so pretty much any 11 inch or maybe just a hair larger is gonna work with this keyboard. And then above the number row, you've got several shortcuts here. You've got a home button, back button, search, media controls, volume up and down, mute button, internet button, and it's got just about all the keys that you would need. Obviously you can see they're a little bit more rounded on this one, but they actually work really nice. The keys on this are gonna travel a little bit further than on the keyboard cases. Not quite like a mechanical keyboard, but definitely a little bit different than some of the other keyboard cases. But overall, pretty nice quality here by Logitech. And overall, just a really nice option to have, not only for the iPad 10, but it's also gonna work with other devices. And again, if you're not gonna be using a keyboard all the time, or you don't necessarily want one that's a case, this one's definitely a good option. Then I feel like the Logitech K780 is maybe even a little bit nicer You've got a longer spot to put your iPad, tablet, you could even put a phone on there. And this one's a little more full size. Instead of the dial, you've got three buttons here to switch between the devices. You've got a number pad over here on the right hand side. You got some of the same shortcuts here up above the number row. You got the home, back button, media controls, volume up and down, mute button, and then you've also got search. And I think I prefer the keys on this keyboard a little bit better than the K480. The keys on this one's a little bit flatter. They're completely round instead of just rounded corners, but I feel like the travel is a little bit better. The keys feel a little more responsive and it's just a little bit easier for me to type on. Of course, everybody likes their keys a little bit different. This one also has a little more breathing room for when you're typing because again, it's more of a full size keyboard, just a lot more comfortable to type, at least for me. I kind of like things about both keyboards and you can't really go wrong with either one, especially if you just need a Bluetooth keyboard, but not necessarily a keyboard case. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.